In this video, I want to show you how we can simplify rational expressions. This is a part two of, uh, of two videos here on simplifying rational expressions. But this particular video focuses in a lot more on factors that are what our author uh, calls opposites. All right, and I'll explain what that means in just a second. Um, I showed in a previous video, and you guys should know by now, that any time you have a number over itself, any number over itself is just always equal to a 1. Right? Anything over itself is just equal to 1, and it has to look exactly the same. So 5 over 5, well, we say sometimes we say that they cancel each other out, but it turns into a 1. Right? Even if you had like negative 12 over negative 12, it's just a 1. Any type of stuff, right? any stuff over stuff is exactly a 1. Hey, how about even something like this, you know, if you had um, x plus 3 over x plus 3. Can we cancel them out? Does that equal to 1? Yeah, it does. All right, even that's a 1, because if they're exactly the same, all right, if they're exactly the same, you can cross them out. Um, let's, just for yucks, let's throw one more here. How about, um, you know, how about if I showed you m minus 2 over m minus 2? Are they exactly the same? Yes, they are. They're exactly the same, so we can cross them out, and we're simply left with a 1. Okay, so anything on top that is exactly the same as the bottom in its like simplest, purest form, we can cross them out and turn them into a 1. All right, so take a look at this example now. Let me show you what I mean by opposites here, okay? How about if I showed you something like, um, how about uh, 6 minus p over p minus 6. Now, I hope you see that this, unlike, here, let me pull this back here. Unlike m minus 2 over m minus 2, they were exactly the same, right? These guys, these two binomials were exactly the same. Well, unlike this one, check these out. These aren't exactly the same. They're close, but not they're not the same. This is what our author calls opposites, meaning this one here is 6 minus p on top, but on the bottom it was p minus 6. So it's kind of opposite of each other, right? They're kind of backwards of each other. They both have a minus sign, so that's good. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how this trick works, this trick called a, a factor of negative 1. All right, let me take that numerator and let me rewrite it. I'm going to show you how I can rewrite just the numerator, this, the 6 minus p. I'm going to um, I'm going to make this numerator look like the denominator. And if I can make the numerator look like the denominator, then I can cross them out, right? So what I'm going to do here, let me show you this in maybe uh, a blue marker. I'm going to take that numerator of 6 minus p. Let's bring it on down here for a second, 6 minus p. And let's factor out a negative 1. Here's what I mean. If I take out a negative 1, Right? Here's what we're asking ourselves. Negative 1 times what would get us back to a positive 6? Oh, that would be a negative 6, right? Negative 1 times negative 6 goes back to a positive 6. And negative 1 times what would get us back to that negative p? Oh, times a positive p. Right? And just to double check, pop that negative 1 back in, distribute it back in, and you'll see that it gets us back to 6 minus p. Okay, so I rewrote 6 minus p like this down here. Look at that. Right? I rewrote it like that. Now, that still doesn't quite look like I want it to. So there's this other property that I'm going to invoke in math that says as long as you are adding numbers, right, as long as you're adding numbers together, you can move them, move these terms around. Right? You can move them around. You can, you can take that p and put it in the front, and you can take that negative 6 or minus 6, however you see it, and put it in the back. You can swap them around. Do you remember what that property is called? It's called the commutative property. Whenever you move things around, if you're adding, the commutative property says you can move them around, right? If you're adding, you can move them. OK, so now, check this out. Instead of writing 6 minus p, I'm writing it this way. Right? Instead of writing 6 minus p right here, I'm going to write it this way. Here it goes. Write it as negative 1 parentheses p minus 6 all over this p minus 6 that was already there. And I hope you now see that I can cross things out, right? Because this p minus 6 on top and that p minus 6 on the bottom are exactly the same. I can cross them out because I was multiplying. All right, and I'm finally, my final answer here is just left with a negative 1. Okay, now that you've seen this, 
now that you've seen this, any time you come across opposites, and by the way, opposites always have minus signs in them. Right? They always have minus signs in them. So any time you see opposites where the first term on top is the last term on the bottom, and the last term on top is the first term on the bottom, and they're separated by minuses, uh, the, you can cross them out from now on. You can just automatically cross them out, but replace them with a negative 1. All right, let me show you two quick short examples of this, and, uh, and you can see how this, this method is going to work. All right, let me grab some more paper, and let's try this out. <coughs> how about, all right, how about simplifying something like, uh, like this? 4x squared minus 9 over 6 minus 4x. Now this one's a little bit trickier, a little bit different here, right? It's a little bit more involved. Um, but I hope you recognize and I hope you see that the numerator is a difference of squares, right? And I showed in a, in a previous video that whenever you try to simplify uh, fractions like these rational expressions, the first thing you should do is factor, okay, is factor. So let's factor that numerator. Since it's a difference of squares, we can factor it pretty easily. 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. And do you notice that these two terms in the denominator have something in common? A, they both have a 2. Okay, so this is all just still factoring, guys. I haven't, I haven't simplified anything yet. I'm just factoring. That's all I'm doing so far. And look, since I can take a 2 out, I'm left with 3 minus 2x. Excellent. Okay, well, boy, if anything up top was exactly like it is on the, in the bottom, the denominator, I could cross them out. Well, these guys here, I hope you recognize, these guys here, this one and this one, are pretty close, but not quite the same. In fact, these guys are opposites. Do you recognize that? They're opposites. So, I can cross them out now, but I have to replace it with a negative 1. Not a positive 1, but a negative 1. So you can put that anywhere you want. How about we just slap it right there? Okay. So there's my negative 1 that I replaced it with. So my final answer is negative 1 times this 2x plus 3 all over, don't forget that 2 is still in the denominator. And that's it. We're done. Final answer. You can write it in a bunch of different ways. You know, If you want, you could write it this way. You could just put the negative out front like that. Just put the negative sign out front put this stuff up top, 2x plus 3, and then just put the 2 on the bottom. You can write it that way if you want. You need the exact same thing. Okay? You can even put the negative down here with the 2 if you want. Okay, last example of opposites. Um, let's see. Let's find a good one here. How about, uh, how about this? I've got... a squared minus b squared all over b minus a. Okay. Do you recognize the numerator? Yeah, it's a difference of squares. Right? Difference of squares. Okay, so once you recognize that, then we can rewrite that numerator. Right? So, and I showed this in a previous video, before you start crossing stuff out, Hey, look, there's an A on the bottom, there's some A's on top. Before you start crossing anything out, keep in mind that this is subtraction going on in both the numerator and the denominator. But this bar right here means division. And division and subtraction are not opposites, so don't cross anything out yet. First, we have to rewrite our numerator as A plus B and A minus B, right? Difference of squares. My denominator just has a B minus A in it. And finally, I hope you see we have opposites, right? We have opposites. We can replace these. We can cross them out and replace them with a negative 1. A negative 1. So we could write our answer this way if you want. Put a negative 1 in front of that a plus b. Uh, you can write your answer. How about, let's get fancy, right? Let's, let's put the negative sign. Let's distribute that negative 1 inside the parentheses. You could write it this way if you want. Negative a minus b. Right, and if you're doing this on my math lab, I think it will take either one of those two methods. Hope that helps.